Welcome everybody to the American Space Museum. I'm Mark Marquette. We're so glad you're with us today to stay curious. It is with great sadness that we share with all space lovers and people involved with NASA the death of a great American icon and hero, General Tom Stafford. General Tom Stafford's passed away this morning at age 93 uh, here in his home in Indian Harbor, Florida. He was, like I said, 93 years old, uh, born September 17th, 1930 in Weatherford, Oklahoma. And to his death, he was a proud Weatherford Eagle. He often credited his hometown just west of Oklahoma City as the foundation for his incredible life and career that unfolded to him. And we're going to share some uh, history from the biographies of uh, General Stafford. Let's put him up there. There we go. No, go back, back, back. There he is in his Apollo suit there on the Apollo 10 mission. Uh, this is a remembrance posted on the website for the fabulous uh, Stafford Air and Space Museum in his hometown of Weatherford, which I've been to uh, several times, four times, in fact, and it is a must on your bucket list, just uh, less than an hour west of Oklahoma City. And we're going to hit some highlights of his life. I think we'll probably be talking about him uh, a couple times on Stay Curious this coming week as a man like this that was involved in so many things that you don't even know things he was involved in. Uh, has really left his mark on the American landscape, not only as an astronaut who flew the mission to the moon uh, with Gene Cernan to do the uh, the first test of the Apollo lunar module uh, in lunar orbit on Apollo 10. Of course, it didn't land, but that was a very hair-raising experience as it was, uh, the mission. Uh, Stafford was involved in four space flights that each one had their own little idiosyncrasies to uh, and it built his character to be involved with some of the the most important committees that uh, America's ever seen in its space program. I'll read a few of those here in a minute but uh, we're going to look at the history of him today, a couple of his space flights, uh, share some memories that personal uh, people have that I've heard around here. Our executive director Karen Conklin has a a cute story where she had General Stafford eating out of her hand. And so you have to stick around to hear that story. But, um, and I met him a few times and, uh, but it was at a, uh, an event where you paid for an autograph and such. So, uh, but he was always, always a gentle man. Uh, it seemed to be that he always gave everyone attention and, uh, he loved to argue about things that he knew was right too. I'll show you a great, argument where he and Buzz Aldrin got into over propulsions and the late Lee Solid was the referee of that. Got a wonderful picture of that. So I wanted to share a couple things um, that uh, his flying skills were quickly recognized when he was in the Air Force and he went to experimental test pilot school at Edwards Air Force Base where he would later serve as the commanding general. How cool is that? Um, Cernan flew on four historic space missions, including three as a commander. In December 65, he served as a pilot of, of Gemini 6 with Wally Schra. Uh, they achieved one of the greatest milestones in spaceflight history by performing the first rendezvous in space with another spacecraft. That, of course, the Gemini 7 spacecraft that had the late Frank Borman in it and the oldest surviving astronaut. Um, at age 94, which of course would be Jim Lovell. Uh, six months after the Gemini 6 mission, he was commanding with Gemini 9 with Gene Cernan. They were the backups uh, to the Gemini 9 crew of Elliot C. and uh, uh, Bassett, who were killed in a plane crash in front of their eyes, basically, uh, during landing. So, uh, in many challenges on that Gemini 9 flight, including a near fatal spacewalk by Cernan. Uh, dramatically portrayed out to Space Center here. Then in May 69, Stafford commanded the Apollo 10 mission to the moon, the first man to pilot a lunar module in orbit, one of 24 humans to venture deep in space and explore another celestial body. 
uh, and then of course he was the commander of the Apollo Soyuz test project. Uh, among the records he said, Cernan and Young and Stafford in Apollo 10 set the all time speed record of 24,791 miles. May have been eclipsed by that Artemis one that came in. A um, couple other things. Here's the website where I'm getting some of this information. Where's their website? It didn't pop up, huh? I must not have. There's his best friend from life, who ironically, 59 years ago today, Alexei Leonov on the right performed the first spacewalk by a human being. Uh, all a very daring and mission of Voskhod two is quite a nightmare everywhere you turn, including the landing when they had to fight off wolves in two days in the snow before they were rescued. Uh, but there they are as friends uh, for life. I'll show you a couple pictures of that friendship. Um, but uh, wanted to say something about General Stafford while I'm giving his short bio. Few people know that Stafford was the commanding general of Area 51 when he was out of commanding general Edwards Air Force Base. Uh, he actually was involved with the F-15, F-16, A-10, B-1B, and prototypes for the C-17. Uh, he commanded Edwards during the shuttle approach and landing tests. But few people know he was commanding general of Area 51 he instantly recognized stealth technology and during his tenure at Area 51 and later to Pentagon, he wrote the specifications and established the program that led to the development of the F-17 stealth fighter and later the B-2 stealth bomber. Stafford, General Stafford, many of you may know, not know, is referred to as the Air Force's, quote, father of the stealth. He also led efforts to create the stealth cruise missile and establish the road rapid development of the F-22 stealth fighter. Uh, so 130 types of aircraft he flew, four different spacecraft riding on three different types of boosters in space. Now that's very interesting uh, stat there. Of course, the Gemini Titan, the uh, Apollo 5 is our Saturn 5 and then the Saturn 1B that was the booster for the ASTP Apollo Soyuz test project. He served on every committee you could think of including the, the shuttle uh, uh, Columbia crew committee uh, and until his death just today General Stafford chaired NASA's key space station oversight committee for International Space Station Safety, Preparedness, and Operation. And astronaut Jim Adamson, a local astronaut, um, has shared with me that he and Tom Stafford are on that committee. And how important has that been that Tom Stafford has been on this International Space Station Committee after, with the Russians after shaking the first Russian's hand in space, his friend Alexei Leonov in 1975. I hope that the annuals of history go down with Stafford as a great leader uh, outside the cockpit or the spacesuit and keeping our Russian-American relationships in line uh, for the past 22 years on the International Space Station. So at the, the American Space Museum gives its heartfelt uh, condolences to the family of Tom Stafford. He's got several children that are active in the space community and uh, we're happy that people that they've reached out to us about their father. Uh, he raised a lot of money for the American Space Museum uh, 20 years ago, 15 years ago, when they were building the Space View monuments. Uh, these, of course, is his handprints out there at Space View Park, the only place in the world you can put your hands on the great General Tom Stafford. And uh, so let's look at a few more uh chapters of history happening today on March 18th, 2024, 59 years ago, a moment I'm never going to forget because I, I remembered as a kid uh, saying hi to Marty Winkle. Hadn't said hi to you uh, behind the Streamlabs console today, Marty. Um, you were busy with the uh, uh, Grumman Lunar Module during this spacewalk in 1965. 
uh, were you not? So I doubt if you remember much about it, but 10 years younger than you, I remember about it. And, and I was just so fascinated with it because we, we couldn't, you couldn't find out much information about it. Hello, Marty Winkle on this sad day of General Tom Stafford. Please comment if you've ever met him. Uh, hey, Mark. Um, I've never met him personally. I've seen him a few times. Uh, never really spoke with him. I remember in Apollo 10, he was coming out of the uh, ONC building with the MSOB, and I saw him in his flight suit heading out to the pad. Um, but I, 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 I did not see him. I not, how do I word it? I wasn't aware of Germany for the most part, because most of Germany was flying in 65, and I was in Vietnam that whole time. So I missed a lot of that. Well, uh, likewise, you were busy working and putting the lunar module together that uh, were such a fabulous machine that they've never been duplicated in 50 some years. Um, Stafford uh, became friends through the Apollo Soyuz test project, but like the world, he was probably very fascinated with the first spacewalk just a few uh, months before uh, Ed White and America's first spacewalk. And they hid some information about this spacewalk because it was a communist country. They didn't share the information uh, that was behind the Iron Curtain. Uh, but this was a, if we had known more about how difficult this was, uh, we might have delayed Ed White's spacewalk or done some other precautions like handrails on the outside of the vehicle. Uh, they gave a false sense of leading the moon race between the USS and USR that March 18th, 1965, uh, and Alexei Leonov's dangerous maneuver of 10 minutes had a lot of luck on its side, as you're going to see here in a minute. In the uh, There's a photograph, and I'll never forget that Popular Science magazine, well, I'll, I'll mention that here in a second, but there's Leonov. Uh, the CCP, CCCP, uh, USSR, uh, was an afterthought, I, I understand that uh, the helmet was laying there and, and someone's had some stencils and something. Let's just put some uh, uh, our country's initials on there for, uh, you know, so everyone remember who it is. Propaganda was a big deal, of course, for the Soviet Union. They never uh, really led on where they were. We had to surmise the progress they made. And uh, you can read a lot about Leonov's dangerous walk. There's an artist's conception of it. This uh, bulbous Vostok 2 is just a, a, a hyped up uh, uh, Vos Vostok that took six humans, including the first woman, to space individually. Voskhod 1 took three people to space without spacesuits, a, a miracle they survived that. And then Voskhod 2, the only other flight of this series, um, had a inflatable canal that came out a uh, tunnel that the astronaut would go out of that tunnel all right instead of directly out of the hatch uh and i'm not never really heard why they wanted to make it this complicated but here's a picture of it at the cosmosphere see the astronaut's head poking out and that whole uh uh tunnel is like a burlap it's, it's like a heavy canvas uh, like you, and of course, industrial grade heavy canvas. The, the Vostok spaceship is behind there. Voskhod is basically the same spaceship, just a few alterations in it. But he had to crawl out that tunnel, and then he had to crawl back inside of it. And his spacesuit inflated, and he found it hard to maneuver. The spacesuit was balloon, ballooning, and it stiffened to the point where he couldn't re-enter this airlock. And uh, the airlock was there so he could close the door behind him so they wouldn't have to uh, put a space, a, a bigger space suit on the cosmonaut inside, who is Belayev inside there. So um, um, Belayev's passed away and so has Leonov at uh, age 80, I think he was 85 when Leonov passed away. Uh, but anyway, the spacewalk was quite a, a, a dangerous thing more dangerous than they let on. And there was speculation in Popular Science Magazine. I'll never remember, never forget buying that at Maury's Newsstand in my hometown of Finley, Ohio. Here's one from December 62, but it had that the Soviets had faked the spacewalk. 
and it was based on the movie and the photos. It showed shadows behind the cosmonaut uh, against the Earth, which wouldn't be possible. They may have faked some of the photographs, but I'm convinced that they never did fake the spacewalk. Uh, and uh, I, I but distinctly remember as a teenager eating all this up, popular science and popular mechanics. Those of you baby boomers out there, cheers to that. Remember them as a real good source for kind of offbeat science magazines and car magazines and, and things that were coming down the pipe, like microwave ovens would be featured, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, but here's a 1962 concept of what a space station would look like. We never got around to those round space stations, round being to, to move maneuver around to create artificial gravity. Uh, but, uh, and that's something that most science fiction shows don't show is artificial gravity. Supposedly there's an anti-gravity th thing on Star Trek and everything else holding them down. So, <laughs> but not on this rendering from 1962. Well, here we talk about uh, Leonov. Uh, we did honor the Apollo Soyuz test project astronauts with their handprints out there. Charlie Mars, who is our uh, one of the astronaut uh, NASA office managers that dealt with the astronauts. Charlie Mars became what I refer to as our godfather here at the American Space Museum. Very involved the last uh, 20 years um, uh, after their, he got these handprints of these astronauts uh, with the help of some other, of course, other people that was a volunteer situation. And there is Tom Stafford and uh, Tarisha Kova, uh, the first woman in space to his left. Uh, going at the funeral of uh, Alexei Leonov uh, in 2020, all right? He died, no, 2021, I think, but he died during the COVID pandemic. General Stafford has been, uh, has had osteoporosis and been over the last couple uh, decades of his life. But there's one of the classic photos as we talk about the space life of this gentleman. Uh, commander of Apollo 10, an important all shakedown of the dress rehearsal. They called it Barnstorming the Moon, Life Magazine did. And they came down within nine miles. And when they separated the lunar module uh, uh, ascent from the descent, uh, a switch was in the wrong place. And they had some gyrations that uttered, that caused Gene Cernan to utter the first cuss words in space heard over the air. Uh, but the uh, quick emergency that it was, they were within, frankly, Tom Stafford has said it, things I've heard him talk at and, and other things I've, I've seen, that they were within, uh, you know, 10 seconds of maybe uh, crashing into the moon. Uh, so very dramatic situation there. But uh, Snoopy, why Snoopy with the shades and everything? We got two spacecraft for the first time since the 10 Gemini missions and the the uh, six uh, Mercury missions. So if you're going to have two spacecraft orbiting the moon, you don't say Apollo 10, you know, which one? So they had to give a call sign like Navy, like all aviators do uh, to their uh, flights. So call sign become, and Stafford helped choose this, of course, because he was the commander. Charlie Brown was the command module, and Snoopy became the lunar module. Now, Apollo 9, that did the Earth orbit tests, called the command module Gumdrop, because that's what it looked like, and the lunar module Spider, because it also looked like a spider. So they went outside the box. Snoopy become the, the uh, eventually the uh, um, mascot of safety for uh, all the NASA's crewed space flights. And um, the mascot, wait, I think we got another picture here of that. I don't think I didn't load that one up in there. This is, so anyway, he become very um, uh, Snoopy. Uh, I was going to say Charles Schultz uh, okayed this. The y'all may wonder that like, I did this when, with the endorsement of the cartoonist of Peanuts, Charles Schultz. There. Uh, let's see here. Tom Stafford here later in life. Um, following his flight to the moon, I wondered why he didn't become a moonwalker, Marty. Never really heard that. He certainly would have rotated into Apollo 13 or 14, uh, as it was three flights later, you would command the next mission. 
Uh, he became the chief of the astronaut office and then was deputy director of flight crew operations. Uh, and then uh, he helped select the crews for the final moon landings in Skylab. And he received his first star with the promotion of Brigadier General, the first astronaut to obtain that rank. So in 1975, he co-commanded the final flight of his career, the historic link up with the Soyuz spacecraft and what was called the Apollo Soyuz test project. Uh, and it brought the U.S. together with the Soviet crew uh, and helped defuse the tensions of the Cold War. Uh, and while I'm thinking about that, uh, would you believe it, Marty, that General Stafford received a nomination for the Nobel Peace Prize and the success of that mission is still considered by many as the beginning of the end of the Cold War. And uh, half a century later, Marty, General Stafford remains the first and only active general to fly in space. How cool is that? And like I said, he was still on the oversight committee for the International Space Station uh, with uh, local uh, friend Jim Adamson, an astronaut. Always love to talk. You're going to see another where he's explaining rendezvous and other things on there. There's the tight quarters of the uh, Gemini spacecraft. You literally close those gull wing hatches and your head was just an inch or two above. Uh, well, had a little more than that, but not much above the helmet that you're going to be wearing. There's Wally Schra, his commander and Mercury astronaut and Tom Stafford. All right. Finally lifting off. They had... Uh, uh, one abort uh, of this mission be, uh, before the Apollo 7 was launched, I mean, uh, Gemini 7 was launched, uh, when the Agena rocket blew up. Uh, and I think they had a, a uh, countdown scrub during that, that one that was called uh, GT-6. This is GT-6A after they launched Apollo 7 in 1965 on... Uh, GT in uh, December uh, 1965, they launched GT-7. Uh, seven was already up there on their 10th day of a 14-day long endurance mission. So this is the crew that took the famous photos. And at the Stafford Air and Space Museum is the Gemini 6A spacecraft there with Tom outside of it. And then because of the death of the prime crew, he and Cernan become the backup crew to Gemini uh, se uh, 9 in June 1966, less than six months later. There he is with a giant match, all right, to light this candle with Gunter Vent there and Cernan behind him, as they also experienced like three scrubs before they launched this. Um, and he got nicknamed the mayor of Pad 19 because he was on Pad 19 so much. Uh, in that six months out there. So uh, they, of course, Ju the June 9th mission was the angry alligator in space in a spacewalk from hell, as Gene Cernan described it, uh, almost losing his life. Yes, that's no stretch of the imagination. He uh, overexerted, become disoriented. His faceplate fogged. He started uh, freaking out a little bit in a way of, of, of trying to, 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 to move to get back in and Tom Stafford had to pull him in. All right. Now, astronauts don't freak out. They are trained to uh, like this great test pilot Gene Cernan was to to just keep going to the end. But his heart rate got up 170 beats and and uh, everything was out of whack. So he was really in a medical emergency. Uh, and this is really depicted well, isn't it, Marty, out there at the Kennedy Space Center, uh, Astronaut Hall of Fame. They have a movie that overplays the Gemini 9 spacecraft that's out there. So Tom Stafford had to be thinking about, do I cut him loose and come home alone? Because that was something on everybody's mind when you went to space, that there would be something that you may have to return without your partner for some some reason and this was a very close situation uh, and Cernan writes about it in his books uh, so the Apollo Soyuz test project for those of you that, that don't know had the link up of the Apollo command module and service module on the left the last one ever used and 
in uh, with the Soyuz module on the right. America built a docking port in the middle, and the great handshake between Leonov and Stafford happened. But it didn't happen till after Tommy Usiak took this photograph. Hey, Tom, snuck one of his pictures in there from 1975. July was the date when this took off uh, the uh, milk stool out there on pad uh, 39A, uh, I guess it would be. And there's Tom's photo of Tom Stafford. Tom, I'm just proud that we had that to, to share. Uh, kind of, a, what is that in the background? A nice little Plymouth in the back there, Marty. Uh, but a rainy day, uh, and Stafford come out as the commander to talk to the, the press that had assembled out there. Uh, thank you for sharing those photos, Tom Musiak. And the handshake in space, which uh, color, it really looks horrible. And, and, and they digitized it and made it black and white to stand out a lot better uh, there. But there's the historic handshake. First time Russia and America shook hands orbiting the Earth, of course, they were adversaries to go to the moon. Uh, Russia wanted to prove that America uh, was not, the democracy was not the best in the world. And we proved otherwise there. So, And they had all kinds of things like uh, each spacecraft brought off one half of this plaque and they put it together in space. There were several things like that they had up there. Uh, Leonov, an artist in his own right, made some sketches up there. You're going to see some artwork here uh, of these missions and uh, a special piece of artwork from uh, Tom Stafford, uh, thanks to our good friend Chris Cowley. Hello, Chris. There was a certificate uh, that Tom Stafford, uh, his involvement with our American Space Museum has gone for 20 years, and we will miss this man so much. Uh, his later years, he wasn't such involved except to send us a a uh, uh, a flown in space uh, beta cloth with the astronaut signatures of all five astronauts from the uh, Apollo Soyuz test project. Vance Brand is uh, in his late eighties, if not ninety years old, and uh, you've got, uh, of course, Gene Cernan passed away about three years ago. And uh, so only Vance Brand is alive here. All right. So um, uh, Kennedy, the uh, Russian, he's passed away and Leonov. So there's Tom Stafford's signature on something that we uh, auctioned off a couple auctions ago. Not sure how much it went for. You have a guess, Marty? No, no idea. I'd say it was three or four or five hundred dollars at least. And to share you some artwork that pertains to this great man and the leadership of his Apollo crew, Apollo 10. Here's his Chris Kelly, uh, his beautiful montage, mixed media there. He uses photographs, uh, his own draw, his own skills of as a uh, artist and uh, and beautiful collages there. And here's another collage of that crew where he took a photograph. Or several photographs and merge them. There at the very bottom is the famous photograph of Cernan touching the giant Snoopy doll that Jamie Flowers, uh, and she'll be mourning the loss of him as she lives in Houston. Hazel Banks is a secretarial friend. We all know Hazel on Stay Curious. And uh, of course, the beautiful work of art that Chris does, mimicking in some ways his great father's uh, Paul Callie's. Uh, go and uh, the uh, Apollo murals. Oh, there, I thought I did put that in there. Yeah, see, that's at the very bottom there. Power to go is the Apollo one that uh, Callie did, his dad. Uh, and then here's another look at the astronauts there. Uh, left to right, Gene Cernan. Tom Stafford and John Young all have passed away, all tremendous with their contribution to the American Space Museum and, of course, as aviators in their own right beforehand. Uh, thank you, Chris, for letting me share the work. Chris, when I talked to him today, uh, said that uh, he got to meet the general in Weatherford, Oklahoma, at an event celebrating the uh, uh, 45th anniversary, he said. There's Chris Kelly with General Stafford. 
uh, signing these great works of art. You can see the size of them there. Uh, and there he is. And he sketched something, Marty, that I think become kind of his moniker. Uh, I believe he would sketch these Apollo lunar modules and command modules. And they made a uh, series of high-tech benches out of aluminum there at the museum. Island. But he... Chris watched him sketch this in front of his eyes and sign it and give it to Chris. And so what a great keepsake there for our friend Chris Kelly, uh, who will be anxious to see at the Shuttle Fest as he'll lead our, our uh, space art panels always. What a great shot. That's the general looking good there. Always that smile on his face. Uh, we'll see some other pictures here with some friends. Let's see. Yeah, let's go this way. How cool that to be to own that, Marty. Uh, he signed it and all there. That's good. Looks like he's got the moon up there with a pimple on it or something at the top. But but here's a, one of the greatest photographs I've ever seen. It was on Buzz Aldrin's birthday. You see, happy birthday, Buzz. This was at a place uh, on the satellite beach called the Fat Schnook. Okay. And uh, this is a uh, Lee Solid is in the background, and that's. Buzz and the General Stafford arguing, Lee Solid said, over which is better, chemical or nuclear power. All right. And uh, Buzz was chemical. I think the General was nuclear power. And uh, the late Lee Solid, who he lost just a couple months ago, uh, his beautiful wife took this picture. She said, I was refereeing him there. I got Lee back there to referee them. So, uh, one of a kind photograph there, I'll tell you guys, at the Fat Snook and Satellite Beach, uh, where both these gentlemen lived. And I got to throw in this nice, neat uh, photograph from Zarella's, one of our favorite pizzerias in Cape Canaveral. That's uh, Mike Zarella there in the middle, uh, son of the of CNN famed reporter John Zarella, and uh, of course that's Bob Cabana. Uh, who just a uh, four-time astronaut who just retired from uh, being the deputy deputy director of uh, NASA. And I understand he's going to live around here, Marty. And we hope that we can see Bob Cabana in our museum. I'm sure we will. Uh, like the general's been in here. Couldn't find any pictures of him on this short notice. That's why I said we'll probably share some more personal photos. Happy to share yours if you've met General Tom Stafford or Zarellas. And this is during COVID 2021, Gene Wright on the left and uh, uh, Ken Kramer on the right. And they, Gene was, is of course, a seamstress and she made uh, hundreds of masks, gave me my first mask during COVID. And she made them for Stafford's Museum and make a couple dozen of them and go to his uh, home here on the Space Coast and deliver them to him for him to send out and... Uh, uh, so I thought I'd throw their picture in of, of them just, just a couple years ago. So what a great guy. How can you fault uh, living to age 93? Uh, like all of the handprints at Space View Park, we have a photograph of the astronaut and the people surrounding them paid $100 to help build the, the monuments and immortalize themselves uh, with uh, where they worked at. So uh Hope that Gary Gerald's enjoyed this, and Steve J, Dave Stangy, Mark Usiak, Tom Usiak, Doug Forrest, Tom Celentano, and Carlton Bailey. Thank you, gentlemen, for always being faithful watchers. And we've got uh, KQ Samurai, Can Lady. Anyway, thank you for watching, okay? Hope that you learned something about Tom Stafford. Um, I haven't really thought it through that he was in four uh, different spacecraft, Marty. Uh, when you think that through, those four different spacecraft would have been, um, the, uh, of course, Gemini, Apollo, uh, Soyuz, and um, uh, well, what's the fourth one? Gemini, Apollo, oh, LEM, Lunar Module. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I got to think about that. All right, four. I was bragging about some of these astronauts that have been in a Soyuz, a Crew Dragon, and a shuttle. Uh, so top that. <laughs> Tom Stafford's been in four of them. Uh, so let's go out with there. Oh, that was my handprints uh, out there. Pretty average handprints, as I think I'm an average man. And 
there is the great Mr. Tom Stafford uh, that we uh, honor today and will honor in the future uh, in many Stay Curious episodes as this is what we do is keep everyone's dreams alive. I want to tell you a couple other stories real quick. Uh, one to end with the story of Karen Conklin, our executive director, some 10 years ago, said she had Tom Stafford eating out of her hand, Marty. Now, how, now she's a pretty lady, so, you know, that wouldn't be hard to do. Uh, any lady could have me eating out of their hand, right? So um, they went to the famous uh, Dixie Crossroads here, uh, right about a mile from our museum, uh, and ordered some rock shrimp. And the rock shrimp uh, was unknown to Stafford. I guess it was like 15 years ago. He just started hanging out here a big time. And rock shrimp is like uh, uh, langust uh, langustinos. Uh, those of you that know that, they're like miniature lobsters, okay? And they're still in the shell. And they're small. Maybe the size of your finger would be a big one. But you got to peel them out of the shell after you butter them all up. And Karen, she said that she peeled them out for General Stafford and put one on her hand, and he picked it up and ate it after she peeled everyone and put it on her hand. So, Karen, that's a great story. Uh, always puts a smile on my face. Uh, wish that uh, uh, I had gotten to talk to General Stafford uh, here at the museum, but did a couple times at some events. He was very, very proud of that museum of his in Weatherford, Oklahoma, right on Interstate 10. Oklahoma City's Science Museum is in itself a very, very good uh, museum. And just two miles north of both of these places is the Kansas Cosmosphere, where I showed you the Vostok uh, spacecraft there. So, Marty, thank you for a great job today. Uh, let me just keep General Stafford up there as we're sure that you're going to be seeing and have already seen all kinds of photographs and tributes to this true American hero and icon of our American space program. We wish the family again of General Tom Stafford. Uh, we wish them all to know that the space community has them in our hearts as we celebrate this man's terrific 93 years of making a true difference uh, in our world. Until tomorrow, I'm Mark Marquette, and I thank you again for watching Stay Curious, and I can't wait to see you in our museum to bridge the space between us.